Hi everybody. There will be many times when you have a page and you have a lot of links or you have parts of your page you want to navigate someone into. And in the old days you might have had to tell them where it is and you had to scroll the user down. You could have even used like little bookmark links with a hashtag and just have people jump directly into the location they want to go into. But what if we could have a much nicer way? What if we could actually scroll the user to a location on the page in a very nice animated fashion. So in part one of this particular solution, we're going to look at how to use a built-in method the browser provides called scroll into view. We're going to go right into building this and using this API to make this work. So if you want to follow along as opposed to just passively following from just watching the video, go to this URL. It's bit.ly slash scroll into view. And what this will take you to is essentially a code pen where the starting content has already been provided for you. So let me go ahead and show you here. And you'll see that you have some HTML. You'll see an example that you can use to kind of get going as opposed to writing everything from scratch because for these scrolling kind of examples and videos, you really want to have some content that you can actually scroll through. So they have some lorem ipsum text that you can, you can totally use to get your job done. And for my purposes, I've taken this exact same code and posted it into VS Code. So that way I just am in a more familiar code editor. You can use the code pen link or you can use VS Code. It doesn't really matter. There's no right or wrong way to make progress here. Now, in this example, let's quickly take a look at what exactly we are seeing here. Let me also open the exact same version you'll see in VS Code. Let me zoom things in a bit so you can see things more clearly. You'll see just some text. You'll see a few links here. There's a link that has the word N-U-L-L-A. I'm guessing it's pronounced Nulla. And then you also have a back to top link at the very bottom. And they don't really do anything when you click on them because that's really where the work that we'll be doing will come into place. And this maps exactly to what you have here, which is just some HTML. And the important parts to pay attention to are that the links that we have at the very top, the Nulla link, has an ID value of Nulla link. Okay, no, no surprises there. And then the back to top link has an ID value of top link. And I'm only calling this out because these are the two values you will need in JavaScript to reference the HTML elements that we ultimately want to scroll into and around. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we want to do is this. On this example, we have a link called Nulla. And then what we want to do is when we click on this link to be taken to, let's say, the fourth item here that says Nulla, Fringilla, Nib. I mean, I'm guessing it's all, I'm pronouncing it poorly. That's okay, not the goal of this exercise. But what you want to do is when people click on this link right here, you get scrolled into the fourth item that you see in this location. And also, I forgot to call this out, the fourth item in there also has an ID value of fourth item. And so right now what we have is we have our HTML all set up to be able to point to important parts of the document. All that really remains is for us to write the code that will allow us to actually navigate the user there when they click on it. So let's go ahead and get started with that. And since we are talking about code, let's go ahead and add our script element, script element. And the first thing I want to do is actually just get a reference to all these elements that we have here. So first, let me add the let nulla link equals document dot query selector and hashtag nulla link. This kind of maps to the ID value you see here. Let me actually make everything a little larger so you can see it even more clearly. So let nulla link equals this. The next one will be the item for the, the fourth item. Let fourth item equals document dot query selector hashtag fourth item. And so now when our code runs, both nulla link and fourth item will now reference the DOM elements at this location. And now what we're going to do is, let me just make sure my notes that I have everything correctly here, is that when the nulla link is clicked, we want to navigate the user to the fourth item, list item, right here. And so when it comes to having to deal with clicks, dealing with you know, some interactivity, we have to add an event and listen for an event listener. And so we had to add an event listener, listen for an event. I got that kind of mixed up. And so first, I'm going to do nulla link dot add event listener. And let's go ahead and listen for the click event because that is the one we want to listen for. And call this one, let's see, navigate fourth. And no, no, no need for worrying about event bubbling or capturing right here. And now that we have added our event listener, let's add the event handler function navigate fourth. 
and it's, you know, just for good measure, add the event argument variable in. And now what we want to do is navigate to the fourth item that we see here. And the way we do that is by using the scroll into view API. And the way this API works is you use the element you want to go into and you call scroll into view on that element. So I'm going to do fourth item dot scroll into view and autocomplete will help you here. And if I just do this, that will pretty much get me to scroll the fourth item into view. Let me save my page. Let's take a look at how this works right now. Let me reload to make sure everything is good. And I'm going to click Nulla. And notice when I click there, you're automatically taken you know, further down on the page. You know, it's hard to say it's actually the fourth item or not, but you know, it is further down on this page right here. Now, the next thing though I want to do is that if you saw the jumping was pretty sudden, there was no real animation between them. And one of the cool capabilities Scroll to View provides is a built-in mechanism for having the jump between locations actually be animated. And the way you can do that is by adding the behavior object and property, sorry, and setting it to smooth. And so I just set the behavior property inside this is smooth. And you can format it in multiple ways. You know, one way is to just break it up or you can just have it in one line like I have done here. And so if I do this and refresh the page, let's make sure everything is good. Notice that when I click on the link this time around, I don't just jump there suddenly, I'm actually animated into the location. That's pretty cool, right? And so that's a very easy way of using this API. We're not done yet though, we also have a back to top link. But now that we kind of see how this API works, we can make much quicker progress in getting the back to top working. So just like before, the first thing we need is to have a place our event can listen for a click event on, and that will be the top link right here. So let me go ahead and do let top link equals document that query selector and hashtag top link. Now I'm you know declaring a variable for each of these things. You don't have to. You can just start with document query selector and directly add your add event listener call up directly. It's all entirely up to you on what makes you comfortable. The top link that add event listener, and in this case it's again it's going to be click. And then I'm going to call this one scroll to top and false again. And now let's go ahead and add our scroll to top function. Function scroll to top and event argument. And in this case, the scroll to the top of the page, in this case it was to be the body element, we don't have to explicitly reference the body element via query selector. We do have the handy document.body shortcut that properly points you to the body element directly. So the document body, scroll into view. And because we want this to be animated as well, I'm going to go ahead and add the uh, appropriate behavior property and set it to smooth as well. And now, if you were to check everything out, let me refresh the page again. Now, you know, this works before because of course we didn't change anything here. If I click on back to top, I'm now, you know, smoothly navigated to the top of the page. So that's a very quick overview of how to use a scroll into view API to go ahead and get scrolling functionality working. Now, there's a reason why I call this part one. It's part one because the scrolling behavior is built into the browser. There's no real adjustment of how long it'll take to scroll into view. There's no timing function that we can modify. There's no bounce we can add if we really wanted to do that. That is a little bit more advanced because a little bit more code and we are deviating from any optimizations the browser might have had. But that is something in part two I do want to cover because there are cases where you may want to have a very special kind of a different unique behavior for the scrolling. And so I don't want to kind of gloss that fact over. So we'll cover that in a future video. And so if you need any help, please post in the forums at forum.group.com. And you know, please don't post on YouTube or on Twitter or on Facebook some of these questions because technical questions require some code formatting and those areas just don't make it great. And also I may not even notice them in many cases. So this is the best place to post. If you have if you like this video, tell your friends and enemies all about how to smoothly scroll into view using the built-in browser capabilities via the scroll into view function. Hit subscribe to be notified of new videos. Follow me at Krupa on Twitter so you can get more quick updates on things that are relevant to web developers and, and so on. Occasionally I post pictures of my cat and my daughter. So, you know, be warned about that as well. And of course, if you like the my style of teaching and explaining content, I have several books, many of them are bestsellers, that might be just up your alley. 
And so check out the link at the bottom of the video and in the description where you can go to the page for it or just go to Amazon to search for Krupa and you'll see all the video, all the books that I have, both in digital and paperback forms. So whatever floats your boat, there is a format that will be just right for you. And with that, I will see you all next time.